Uh, so uh, good to see everyone and I'll give you uh, new short introductions as people come along. My name is Rene. I was born and raised in Sao Paulo, Brazil and have moved to Rome, Italy 10 years ago. We celebrate 10 years uh, uh, anniversary, our 20 year anniversary on Tuesday, so 10 years ago, uh, to plant a church, which have done in, the, in Rome's um, university neighborhood. Close to the, Rome has the largest university in Europe, so we started the church right next uh, to it, my wife and I and a team. And uh, the church is now eight years old. It's called Opera. And I'll share a lot of what we have learned so far. I thought of, um, let me start sharing here um, a presentation. Uh, so you can, hopefully you can be able to see me and, and the slides. So uh, this is a top, our topic for today, leading an externally focused evangelistic, evangelistic church. And I realized that um, in, as a first session in this, in this network, I think it's, um, it's fitting because I think uh, we'll talk about a number of evangelistic uh, issues over time, like um, how to communicate or one-on-one -on -one and with people. And this uh, grows out of a, a, a framework in which puts this local church as a center of an evangelistic hub for all kinds of different uh, evangelistic uh, approaches, which I think I have a, lot, a number of approaches available. And I think when they converge and use the strengths of a local church, they get to be very powerful, very encouraging. So that's what I thought about sharing here with you guys. And um, first of all, the first things I, I thought of uh, showing to you is just like a, a beautiful, uh, one of uh, my, my favorite pictures are baptisms. When people come to make a, a profession of faith, we, um, as a church, we don't have a, a church building of our own. So we go to a lake outside of Rome. And it's a big deal for adults to get baptized here because only children are baptized in, in Roman Catholic context, right? So um, it's a very special day for us. And the first thing I wanted to convey, uh, as many of you have, 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 must have seen in other places in Europe, that it's, it's very hard soil, but God is powerful and God is reaching people and people are, are making decisions for him here and then so many other places. So this is uh, the oldest person we have baptized so far. Yeah, I think he was 71 back then. It was beautiful just to hear the, his testimony. And uh, I said, I've uh, been a sinner. I ask forgiveness. I want to uh, be baptized. It was I was beautiful, and this is uh, one of our, another person who was baptized as well um, at the lake. Uh, so I think the first thing I wanted to convey is very much possible, and it's happening, and God is, God is uh, at work. So what I thought of sharing with you guys today, it's um, um, uh, the topics. I thought of uh, breaking our session in two parts. First, um, about um, uh, a, a nurturing, a, a witnessing community. Uh, and how we can do complex evangelism in a number of ways through events and other things. Um, and then we have some discussion uh, time in groups and then nurturing a discipleship pathway, a process in which we can carry along and bring people along with us. So I was missing this, this slide, but still, let's go to the, the first uh, uh, thing I wanted to share. Um, is that a thing, uh, uh, effective evangelism uh, uh, grows out of, in the local church context, out of um, a witnessing community a holistic approach, which doesn't depend only on leaders, as someone has mentioned, and is not only event-based, though it uses events, or not only courses, though it uses courses as well, but it's a holistic, uh, the whole community becomes a, a, a witnessing community. Okay. There we go. In which the first element is a vision to reach non-believers and grow mature disciples. A vision which is uh, vivid, which is communicated constantly a, a, a number of times a, a year, and which is celebrated by, by different by, what, what we do and the decisions we take, and which and when that, a local church has a, a, a clear vision. We are here not just to perpetuate what we've done so far, or um, because we've done things in the past so far, and uh, let's keep on, but we really want to reach and make the efforts of doing that. Out of that, grow, um, uh, someone has talked about worship, I think it was Beth, right, uh, Beth? Um, I think it's uh, not only the only element for sure, but I think it's, it's one of them, um, worship and preaching that engages culture and non-believers. I think it's a very um, important key point in which we can do, I think, wonderful evangelistic events in themselves. But if, if the worship doesn't, uh, doesn't connect with everything else, um, I think it, uh, we lose a lot of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the effort we do. So try to have a worship and preaching. I won't get into that, I'm just uh, laying that out. Um, worship and preaching that engages culture and non-believers. And when they come, it becomes a regular part of church life, 
in which almost every Sunday there's someone new. We greet people, we welcome people, and have the dynamic going on. Then also um, encourage believers to nurture friendships with outsiders. I think it's a very much uh, um, an element which, which is often missing, in which sometimes we do wonderful events or have very creative ideas, but our people, our congregations, are not nurturing relationships with outsiders, don't have people to invite to. Even if you have the ama most amazing thing going on, we have to really um, build it as a part of our, our, our cultures, um, that we take con constant time to uh, build relationship with neighbors, with coworkers, with roommates, with family members, with friends, so these people then can be invited. Um, then we celebrate newcomers and friends who invite them. So uh, whenever, uh, uh, at least in our church, we greet and welcome. And uh, if someone wants to come to speak with me after the service, uh, a believer, I always say, uh, wait a minute, let me just go greet the newcomers and then I'll, I'll go uh, speak with you. So we really try to uh, welcome them and uh, nurture that. And, um, and create a, a complex uh, evangelism uh, dynamic with various sorts of connection points and on-ramps, on-ramps in terms of a, how someone can get inside and uh, connect with the rest of the, of the community through personal friendships, through secret groups, through events, uh, a number of things uh, doing in a complex way, a systematic way in which we'll connect with a number of people with um, uh, have different life, in, life moments, different interests. Sometimes they have a, a friendship with an existing believer, sometimes not. Uh, events which are more cerebral, which are more artistic. So a number of things which will connect uh, with people. Here I thought of um, uh, sharing a little bit of some events. So I think um, think of the process, how we start um, with different points of contact with people, uh, some examples, and then we'll uh, talk about how to draw them into a process later on. So uh, some examples of uh, events that you may have uh, seen in our context with seen working here in, uh, in Rome. This is um, we call the aperitivo evening. So uh, Evening with, evenings when we have a nice atmosphere with food and uh, a decoration, as you can see, and, uh, and art and a uh, nice atmosphere. So I went through this slide, so nurturing uh, uh, witnessing community, uh, complex evangelism. So talking about uh, first events, which have their, it's not the only thing, but have uh, their place. This is one uh, example of a um, uh, Valentine's evening uh, dinner event for couples, and we did it for singles as well. Uh, this is uh, when, uh, that, part, that event in which uh, people were interviewed. This is a couple being interviewed where they had discussion questions and uh, something going on. Uh, another example is um, we did a, a 70s uh, party in which we tried to engage people over 50. So we thought, let's do a party uh, 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 from the 70s. And it was wonderful. It was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. We had a number of people came for the first time. Um, in this aperitivo evening, at least the ones we do at our church, uh, we try to have this welcoming atmosphere with food, decoration, and music, something very nice, a theme. Um, and uh, sometimes there are only e social evenings in which people connect and come. Sometimes we have interviews or short talks about a theme like science and faith or groups, group discussions. Um, and, uh, and do that. Then here are some. Um, we try also to see uh, what else is going on in our city. So see uh, artists in our community, for example, like they have launches or opening nights or uh, first uh, theater or photography session or something, which we see them as opportunities of connecting with their network of people. Um, we try to embrace initiatives also that come forward from within our church and also our city, also other ministries and make partnerships with other ministries. These are two examples. One is called the Mark Drama which is uh, in, uh, GBU or IFPA, uh, has different names in different uh, countries. This is a um, theatrical production, uh, the Gospel of Mark being acted out by a group of 15 actors uh, over the course of an hour and a half is very powerful. So we just partnered with them, and people were part of it and uh, it was beautiful. This was proposed uh, by Crew, a Campus Crusade, Agape, and which is uh, an event for women by women on the International Day of Women, in which they uh, take photos and write them messages for other women and their bodies. And it became a huge success because women uh, love to share what they have, when I say with other women, and they come and their discussions come out of that. And uh, also a final, uh, some final examples of also some cerebral events and more engaging ideas. 
uh, we started doing uh, debates with other groups um, some time ago. This is the first debate we did with the president of the Italian um, Association of Atheists and Agnostics. Um, and this guy, we did his first event on the, on the existence of God. And then this is one of the professor, also on the existence of God. And uh, this is the main university here in Rome. So, um, so this is another debate we did. Uh, uh, so in the campus of the main university, in the main uh, area of the campus. And it was wonderful to, um, though we, we were challenged, we were engaged with other people, uh, to hear another perspective. That many more people came to, those, to that event because we were articulating different perspectives. And it was, I think, a, a step of growth for us, not just to organize events in which we can the gospel on our terms and in our building, but also outside engaging with someone else. So we did repeat, repeated this approach. Then we invited the uh, biggest Buddhist group in Italy. So we had a debate with them on the meaning of life. So this is a Buddhist professor. And then the final one, Rome has the largest mosque in Europe. So I invited them to a, an event about how can religion be a force for peace in the world today? So a leader from the mosque spoke, um, um, laid out the Muslim perspective. I laid out the Christian and then we talked. And this is a picture of, the, of that event. One of our guys, this guy is very uh, friendly. He went to, and then build respectful friendships with Muslims and reach other people. So some examples of cerebral events as well, which uh, can work well, in which in our perspective, it was very useful to take the initiative to do one way for someone to invite us, but I took the initiative and contacted these groups and proposed these uh, activities for them. Um, I realized that these events grow out of relationships, so it takes some time to contact them, sit down, build trust, uh, but then uh, propose something. It was helpful to give the event a clear structure. In these cases, for example, um, each side has a 15 minute uh, slot to present their side. Then we have responses to each other, and then we open for discussions and Q&A. And it was helpful to organize thoughts and uh, have both interaction and perspectives being, uh, being uh, expressed. Then um, we have a follow-up process in place for those who want to hear more. So uh, in, the, in our case, we do question, a simple questionnaire. How was the event? Do you have suggestions? Would you like to hear more from the Christian or the Buddhist side, for example? And people lay out and give their emails and, 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 uh, and, um, and uh, uh, telephone numbers. One of them is a guy called Gianluca. He came to our, uh, here's this guy in this picture, the one in the middle. He came to our uh, event we did with the Buddhist, invited by a Buddhist friend. He used to work at, at a Buddhist uh, publishing house. And he gave his contact, came to our secret group the following day, and then over time uh, became a Christian and uh, was baptized and is training for ministry uh, right now. So it's an example of someone who was, uh, one of these events was useful in his contact and his journey.